Jen here with another book review for you. Today I'm going to be reviewing Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkness, which is the second book in the All Souls trilogy. So if you're new here, welcome. My name is Jen. On this channel, I primarily do uh, book reviews. Sometimes I have other things like unboxings of different items and things like that, such as goddess provisions or uh, the occasional book box. So if you're into book reviews, writing, NaNoWriMo, things like that, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Um, I don't have a regular posting schedule. I would say I post pretty much, you know, as I feel like it, but it's been at least a couple times a month as of late. So like I said, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you want notifications since I post pretty sporadically, then you might want to hit that bell as well. So let's get into the review. So Shadow of Night is part of the All Souls trilogy. I do have the um, other book, the very first one in the series, which is A Discovery of Witches, reviewed on this channel as well. Uh, if I remember, I will link it below. But uh, it was recently turned into a, I think, Netflix? I'm actually not sure if it's Netflix or not because I don't have Netflix. But um, A Discovery of Witches was turned into, like, a series, a TV show series, uh, fairly recently. But essentially, it's the story of uh, Matthew de Claremont. Well, he's Matthew Claremont in the very beginning, but he becomes de Claremont later because um, he has many names. But he's a vampire, and then you have Diana Bishop, and she is descended from the Salem bishops, and she is a witch. However, in the first book, you learn that Diana, I'm going to try to avoid spoilers here, so Diana. Um, has always denied her powers and she's a historian uh, she's a professor at, at I think Oxford and she studies manuscripts and she uh, kind of unintentionally calls this manuscript to her in the library using her powers and it's more like the manuscript was drawn to her well the discovery of this manuscript attracts a lot of attention um, not just from Matthew who's also a professor but he's more like a biology genetics professor but from all sorts of creatures. So in this setting, uh, we have creatures that live among humans. So there are demons, vampires, and witches. Um, and there's also like a governing body of those and it's to try and prevent discovery, um, you know, by humans, although humans kind of already suspect. Uh, so anyway, so against the rules of the covenant, Matthew and Diana end up falling in love. Now Diana was kind of annoying in the first book, not horribly so, more so just because she was so stubborn. There's a lot of info dumping in the first book, so I gave it four stars. Meanwhile, Shadow of Night, I gave five stars. I really enjoyed this book. Um, it picks up right where the first book ends, so they're about to travel in time in the first book. And I really don't want to spoil how that comes about, but I guess I could just say that there are some so w witches and like magic is kind of intertwined and there are some witches who can travel through time so what ends up happening is this book picks up as they're traveling back in time so they're traveling back in time because when diana found that manuscript pieces were missing and pages were missing and the text was enchanted so that it's like looking for those missing pages and they can't like make sense of it and um matthew wants the book because he thinks that um, he kind of sees being a vampire as like a burden and by finding this book then he can piece together like their origin but also um, some genetic anom anomalies that seem to be happening in the present day um, with vampires specifically but like creatures you know being less and less a part of the population like are they dying out and if so why and you know are their origins related to it so he is kind of looking at it from the genetic perspective. So they go back in time to try and find this manuscript and see if they can find it like in a more complete form. Um, so it did take me a while to read this. I think I started and then I was like, you know, like I think I don't know if the holidays came around or what happened. But it did take me a little bit of a while. But I also wasn't trying to like rush through it. So the things I really liked about this book, well, one, in I think the entire series, since Deborah Harkness in reality is actually a historian as well. So she incorporates a lot of people like uh, Walter Raleigh, William Shakespeare, um, John Dee, and some other people, Queen Elizabeth, and she incorporates these people uh, into the story. So there's kind of like 
some elements of truth with some fictitious twists, which is kind of fun. Um, so there's a lot of information. This book was much better about not info dumping because in the first book there was not only a lot of historical dumping, but scientific dumping kind of as well. So I'm kind of nerdy, so I like that sort of thing, so it really wasn't a turn off for me. But this really doesn't happen as much, in my opinion, in this book. I will say at first the book was hard to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, get adjusted to because, you know, going back into Elizabethan times was a little bit of an adjustment because all of the first book took place basically, you know, in what you would consider the present. So that was a little bit of an adjustment. But overall, this book was super, super interesting. Uh, there's a lot of development between Matthew and Diana and their relationship and Matthew's re like issues from his, I don't want to say past lives, um, because it's all one life for him because he's a vampire. So he, you know, it's really hard to kill a vampire. So he's lived for like centuries, but I guess you could say past lives in, in terms of you know, everyone around him passes except other vampires, so then he has to start a new life. So he has some issues that are uh, residual issues that he needs to deal with that are affecting him in the present. And so you really learn a lot about him. You learn a lot about his father who had passed away. Um, you learn a lot more about Diana and her past. And it's there's not really much in the present. There's a couple chapters where they jump to the present, and it's kind of to show you how... Matthew's family is like tracking, um, kind of tracking Diana and Matthew through history, meaning like Matthew and Diana may make a decision about an object, like a piece of jewelry or something, and then they show in the present, you know, that piece of jewelry being discovered and coming to auction, and then Yasbo, um, I don't even know if that's how you say her name. That's how I've been reading it. Uh, Matthew's mother, vampire mother, uh, you know, would snatch up the object or whatever because it's kind of hard to go back into the past without altering, you know, any threads to the present. Uh, that said, Diana also takes the time. One of the other reasons they go to the past is, um, and it's met one of Matthew's past specifically, is for Diana to find a witch to teach her like about her abilities because she denied them for so long and she she's kind of unique in her abilities which is something from the first book I don't want to spoil so she's kind of looking for a mentor and then she finds out that like her abilities are way more than anybody had suspected um for her so there's just it's a really complex story but like I said it's less of the science and the less of the historical dumping and more about like the people and the relationships uh you know Diana forms friendships with you know some alchemists and Mary Sidney and different things like that they find some um children that they take under their wings and you know there's just certain there's just such good character development I guess actually now that I'm thinking about this oftentimes second books kind of suck in a series this one is actually really good um so if you like the discovery of witches or kind of were on the fence with the first book, which if you listen to my review, I actually had read the book like, gosh, like five years ago and read the first chapter and thought it was boring and then set it down and then something just compelled me now um, to pick it up again. But I'm really happy that I've picked up this series because I was looking for something really immersive. And then um, I actually started the third book. I'm only a couple chapters in. Uh, but in that book is called The Tree of Life, which is also a reference to some things mentioned in the first book and in this book. But um, basically, I uh, was reading the reviews in the front of the third book, and it was comparing this series to like an adult version of Harry Potter, or if you love Harry Potter, if you love Twilight, if you love Outlander, then you would love this, which I have the first book in Outlander. I've never watched it, but I have the first book, and now I'm super intrigued because I loved Twilight when it was, you know, right before it became super popular and like blew up. I was really into Twilight and had liked when I read it. I love Harry Potter. I'm enjoying this series tremendously. Um, so now I'm really curious about reading Outlander. So I might have to read the first book and see if I want to continue that series or not. Um, either way, I'm just rambling, but this is a great, uh, a great book. So if you, I would say, yeah, if you are into Harry Potter or Twilight, you might want to check out A Discovery of Witches. Um, the first book 
is good. It's not as good as this book. So I would recommend, you know, that you read it and get the background because the information in it is needed. But this book just starts in medias race, so right in the middle of the action. And you just learn so much more about the characters. And there's a lot of depth in this. And like I said, there's a lot of fun historical nods um, in here as well. So yeah, Shadow of Night, I gave five stars. Um, parts I left, parts I cried. Um, and it definitely captures your attention. So I'm really enjoying this series and I am excited to, you know, continue reading the third book and then bring you a review on that. So in the meanwhile, happy reading and happy writing.